Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. We are having a little coffee talk. And that's basically the key to what life has been in quarantine. Um, because what else can we really do? Um, it's been crazy. It's been crazy. I, for one, um, I'm more of a stay at home person. Personally, I'll be the first to say that. But it's awkward being forced to stay home if that makes sense. Like I'm totally okay with going about my business, doing my day-to-day -day activities, and then just being like, okay, it's two o'clock. I'm going to go home. I'm going to chill. I'm going to relax. Then I'll get the kids off the bus and just have me time. But when you're forced to be in, it just feels so different. Anyway, enough about me. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, like my kids are fun because my, my one son, he just told me the other day, mom you're like so crazy but like I love you so much you're the best mom and I was like oh my god that is such a compliment because I am I'm freaking nuts half the time um I like I'm just weird I, I don't know about you guys I talk in silly voices to them uh, I just like to have fun. I like to be crazy, live on the wild side. But anyway, I'm going to talk to you guys <laughs> and, uh, and I'm dropping shit. Um, so anyway, I'm going to talk to you guys and just kind of do a little get ready with me. Um, if you want to know more about my, um, skincare routine, it's kind of been the same. Just refer to my previous videos, but basically I don't, I shouldn't even say my skincare routine. Um, my priming routine. I just basically use the Beauty Blender Leveler Primer and I kind of work that all over just because I do tend to get oily throughout the day. So today for foundation, I do want to tell you guys I'm mixing Laura Mercier's Flawless Lumiere. Um, I love, love, love this particular foundation. However, I like a little more coverage and a little more staying power. So to do that, I just mix it with the Flawless Fusion Ultra Long Wear Foundation, which is a more mattifying, um, like a natural matte finish. Oh my God. And this, the wand is like falling out of it. So before I, hold on, let me rewind. But anyway, I just mix it with the matte version. As you can see, I've like literally hit empty on that. So I'm just going to mix those two together. One is a neutral undertone. The other one has more of a warm golden. The warm golden is a little too golden for me. So I mix it to make it more of like a neutral warm. And um, I think it's just because my skin is just kind of all over the place. I have redness and I do have pores and blackheads and all that wonderful stuff. And my nationality is kind of crazy. I'm Hungarian. Ecuadorian, Irish, British, like what the hell is that? <laughs> but I'm applying this foundation first with a Jaclyn Hill brush and then I'm going to go in and just buff it out with my beauty blender. Um, anyway, I'm using a little tiny bit of this LA Girl Peach Corrector on the inside corners here where I find I have the most discoloration. And I'm just going to press that in with my finger real quick. So I don't want it to spread too far. And then I'm gonna take a very tiny amount of translucent powder on a beauty blender and just press that in to the peach because I don't want the peach to slide when I go in with my concealer. So I just find if I put a little bit of this down, it'll prevent the peach from moving off my face and then therefore it's not even correcting and working. The peach is going to help brighten if you have um, dark circles under the eyes and your skin is a little bit more like light and fair. And then obviously the deeper your skin tone, the deeper kind of orange you wanna go with. You can even do like pink if you have really fair, very light skin, um, but it just helps remove some of that darkness and that sallow skin. So yeah, so we're gonna do that. And then I'm gonna go a little brighter and, um, you know, in your face today, we're going to use the C5 Magic Concealer from Jeffree Star. Mm -hmm. 
So um, really quickly, guys, I always go in with an M530 from Morphe, something fluffier to go in and just kind of work that contour and make sure that there's no harsh lines and just blend it and buff it out. Um, and as you'll notice, like when I do my makeup, I try to go lighter with my foundation rather than going in with such a strong, rich, pigmented color. And the reason for that is because I hate, I'm, I'm, I can't say I hate to each their own. It irks me when I see people on Instagram and YouTube going in with such dark foundation that you can see clearly does not match their skin and you can see that visible difference. And, you know, they're like, don't worry, I'm going to go ahead and use a lighter concealer, which will kind of diffuse that. And it's like, no, like you, if you don't blend that foundation all over, <laughs> you're going to see that visible difference on your skin from your body and your face. And, um, that's why I like to use contouring and cream products to add depth and warmth. And I do let my concealer sit a little bit just because I do like it to warm up on the skin. But I'm um, going to take a little bit from the back of my hand now, move that into a beauty blender, and then start blending out. I'm just using a little bit of ColourPop's Coconut Beach um, bronzer, which I find makes a really nice kind of like contour bronzer because it's not super warm. Um, it does turn a little bit warm on me personally, but it's not warm where I'm like, whoa, terracotta orange, honey, you know? And I personally like cooler tones when I go in and sculpt my face. But um, another positive with being home right now, how many great makeup artists and like tutorials are you seeing on Instagram? Because literally every time I go on Instagram, somebody's live. But some people are genuinely showing you tips and tricks and, you know, ways to get the best out of their products. And I love that because I, for one, am a big stickler on when I purchase stuff, I really try to research and look into ingredients and benefits, um, sensitivities, fragrances, parabens, sulfates, everything. I'm not, you know, crazy hardcore, don't do it if it has a sulfate in it, but I, I do like to know what I'm putting on my skin and research. Um, and I love having, you know, these lives that people are talking so much about their products and the benefits and the how-tos, because I think sometimes we forget, like, we think we know everything, so we put a product on the way we normally would, and we don't realize, like, oh, maybe this is not the way it was intended to be used. Love, love, love that. I'm going in with my P. Louise, rumor two. Um, let's talk about P. Louise real quick. There was a huge sale recently that I did not get to be a part of. Because I was stuck in the queue every single time I wanted to go and purchase. And I do have to say I was really happy that they were very transparent about the amount of traffic and difficulties and how they were trying to work, I guess, with different servers to um, try to fix the situation and the problem. Um, so I got it. I get it. And, you know, I've seen, obviously, like, working through Morphe, I've seen Jeffree Star go through this, and it's sometimes just impossible. And kudos to them, though, for getting that type of traffic to come through, because, honestly, I love, love, love P. Louise products. And um, that's just incredible that that many people are shopping and purchasing it, like, kudos to them it just sucked because I didn't get on and when I finally got through I got so excited I'm like yes I'm on and then I didn't realize that they had ended the sale because it had extended due to the the traffic problems and I was still late Ugh, sorry my life I'm always late for everything I'll be late to my funeral my mom said and that's true I will be because I'm gonna live forever 
But I want to use this Anastasia Norvina Pro Pigment Palette 3, which is my favorite because if you know me, you know I love butterflies. Um, butterflies are my favorite. They have been. I'm a true 90 girl in that respect. I am a true 90s, 90s bitch. Um, we had little butterfly clips in the 90s into 2000 that you would put in your hair that are now just like the little like, you know, um, teeth clips that you can wear but I had them in like every color <laughs> pastel nonetheless and butterflies were just my jam I always have a butterfly in my room somewhere I have a butterfly glass mirror I just feel safe and protected when there are butterflies around me I feel rebirth I feel hope from them I'm call me crazy I just love it so anyway moving on um I wanted to do a look today crazy as this is that was Rasta inspired because I have been listening to reggae I've been listening to um personally I'm like a ska girl 90s again the uh sublime 311 no doubt slightly stupid many many Boston's like I just that's the vibe I've been in lately so I wanted to do a Rasta look which I did very a very long time ago if I can find the picture I'll post it in here um in this video that was the old in with the new let's try to create i'm going to use this palette because we have some really cool colors in here so the first thing i want to do is start off with kind of a neutral tone to go into the crease so i'm actually going to work with e4 which is this yellow and i know you're saying like nicole you said neutral this is super brightening and i want to pop this in first before I go in with a brown shade. The reason I am adding a little bit of brown is because we're working with green and gold and I wanna add a little bit of a transition. Um, and then I'm probably gonna smoke out the lower lash line with red. But if you know the Rasta colors, it's yellow, green, and red. And um, when I was growing up in Jersey, we used to go down to the shore all the time and um I loved 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 when you would find like the Rasta shirts and stuff because Jersey definitely had kind of like a counterculture moment where you would see um like hippies and tie-dye and all this kind of stuff and then with that you know of course you've got your Bob Marley and um then, of course, then more 90s, like sublime version of what was reggae and rock and punk all kind of fused together. And so there was always like, you know, Rasta bathing suits and actual, I mean, you're so close to the city. You had like Jamaican and um, influence, food, culture, everything. So I just, I just love it. And um, right now I'm going to drop into a three, which is this kind of like taupey brown camel color. And I'm just going to pop that on a Sigma E40, which is a smaller, still diffusing fluffy brush. And just work that deeper into the crease just to kind of add some depth to the gold here. And when you mix the two together, that's what I love about these pro palettes, because you can mix and master colors to whatever you kind of want you get like almost like a deep gold like a um gold finch color now what i want to do is start working in the greens so i have um d3 and e1 d3 is definitely more lime this has almost like a teal undertone i want to do d3 And I'm going to start working this on the outside corner. I'm using a J star brush and I'm just kind of pressing it first and just keeping it on this outside edge here and I'm pressing and pressing and then I'm going to start working the color upward. So I'm trying to follow my lower lash line and I just want to keep it very diffused and smoky. And then also bring whatever's left on the brush into the crease this way. 
Okay, so now that we have that placement, I want to deepen the green just a little bit because it is more of like a hunter green um, that is in like more of that like Rasta family color. So I'm going to take an M503 from Morphe and grab E1. And I think by adding it to this more lime green, we're going to get more of the green tone that I want to pursue. And I'm just patting, patting, patting. I want to keep this nice and tight and tapered since it is a deeper green. Then if you flip your brush to the side, you can use the same brush to buff it out because it becomes a little fluffier on that angle. And I'm just going to buff it into a little bit more of that lighter green. And you may have to do this a couple of times where you press, 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 and then buff out just to get the exact tone and vibrancy that you want. So now you can see we have quite a nice placement of the green going onto the outside corner and into the crease. I'm just going to pop a little bit more of that lime color and I'm going to tap it out a little bit. And I just want to come across the center of the lid and up into the crease. And I'm just going to blend, blend, blend. And so you can still see there's like a variation of colors, but we're allowing that green to be our focus point. Now, before I go into anything else on the lid, I'm going to take an M149, which is a very small detailing brush from Morphe. And I'm going to go back into my Anastasia. I'm going to grab actually the color B12, which is kind of teal, but I want to mix it into E1. And it has a little bit of shimmer and a little bit of matte. And I'm going to use this underneath in the lower lash line now. And the reason I'm starting with that little more like bluish teal is because I want something to be a little bit darker right here. We're going to wipe that off now using that same brush. We're going to pop into C2. And I need a little bit of blue base because the red has a cooler undertone. Even though it is a warm red, it's like a warm cool. And I'm going to start working that now on my lower lash line from about the center where that green is all the way in. And just kind of coming up in an angle this way. Then I'm actually going to take this kind of fiery orange color, which is A5, mix it with C2 so it makes a little bit more of a fire engine red. And we're going to blow this area out a little bit using a fluffy crease brush. So again, mixing those two colors and now we're coming around that green. So I don't know if you guys remember this, but back in the day, being a 90s girl, NYX Cosmetics, which I guess is now NYX Professional, I don't know. Back in the day, it was NYX, okay? Um, but that was what a lot of my friends and I used because we were in beauty school and um, we just needed affordable products that we could throw into our kit, which um, real talk is why I'm such a fan of a lot of Morphe products because Morphe, BH Cosmetics, um, I think it was Mayron, um, Cinema Secrets, like a lot of those brands were like kind of the most affordable products that you could put into your kit, especially if you were in cosmetology school, aesthetic school, um, especially where I was from up in Jersey. And, you know, NYX products were also something that a lot of us used. And back then you could only find it at like beauty supply stores like Harman's. Um, but it was a great product because it was, you know, so many fun colors and interesting things that you could use to create, you know, more fun fantasy colors. Anyway, long story short, um, I used the jumbo 
milk pencil and I know I'm pretty sure they still make them today but it was like that milky white color and we would use that as our eyeshadow base back in the day and then because it was white it would you know brighten any colors we put on so in paying homage to that but not with that actual product I'm going to use the Morphe white concealer which is the 0, 0.0 and I'm going to take a small brush the 213 which is a packer brush but it's very small and just work this in to the lid to try to carve out a little space and we're just pressing and I'm going to bring this up a little bit to create a little more of a deeper lid I have a pretty good lid space but I like to accentuate a little bit more just to really get the color to pop and this little brush is perfect I'm leaving that portion dark the front portion will be the yellow and gold mixture so while that dries I'm going to go ahead and do the other side real quick all right, so now we have the white placed down. I'm going to go in with a Jaclyn Hill JH448. And I'm going to go back into those green colors. So again, we're going to grab a little bit of that teal and that E1. Tap it out. And I want to just pack it onto this area here. And then before we go ahead and add the yellow, I'm going to just diffuse that out a little bit, going back in with that fluffy Jeffree Star brush that we used earlier. Now I'm going to clean off that Jaclyn brush. And I want to go into that really pretty gold color. So this is that E4 right here. I'm going to grab a little bit of a larger packer, the JS11, and again, still with that E4, just go ahead and press that in. I'm going to go back into that smaller brush from Jaclyn and actually grab the color C1, which is this really pretty golden yellow champagne color. And I want to grab some of that on this brush. And then I'm going to take a little bit of the Morphe Continuous Setting Mist, spray that on that brush, and right where we placed the white on the inside corner, I want to actually bring, I want to actually bring that golden around, and just give it a little, a little hint of gold in there. Then going back into that M504, I'm going to grab a little bit of that E4 yellow and just go ahead and gently graze that into the crease again just to soften it. It's all starting to come together. It always looks crazy, but I promise you once you start to get liner on and lashes, everything starts to fall into place. So really quickly, I want to brighten up the inside corner of my eye, the inner um, lash line. So I'm going to use Coconut from Morphe, and this is just going to help kind of expand the eye a little bit with all these wild colors going on. I feel like this look wouldn't be complete without a liquid liner, so I'm going to use the Maybelline. This is the Hyper Easy Brush Chip Liner, and it's super, super thin. Definitely want to make sure you give it a good shake before you go ahead and start drawing your line. Okay, so now that we have this extra dramatic exotic look going on I want to go ahead and get rid of any possible fallout so I'm going to take a little bit of that Ben Nye powder and this Jaclyn brush and just start flicking first to make sure nothing drags and smears and then once you see that you are in the clear you can go ahead and actually buff the powder into the skin. Now one thing I find with ColourPop products in general is that most products will kind of drink up into the skin, no matter if it's, you know, Tom Ford or if it's ColourPop or Wet n Wild. 
Um, with ColourPop, it tends to happen really quick on me and it tends to fade very quickly. So to add a little bit more depth to this bronze area and of course some more glow, I'm going to take a Morphe R7, which is a big full fan brush here, um, like a bronzing brush. And we're going to take this Glam Glamma Bronze Originator, which also has a little bit of a cooler undertone and there is some warmth in it too, but I'm just kind of very lightly buffing it into the um, contour that I've already placed. I'm also going to take a small pencil brush and just kind of use that bronzer to add a little more definition to the contour on my nose. I'm just going to use a little brush now to smooth that out. Now one product I really love that adds super, super beautiful glow to the skin but keeps it very natural is the Jaclyn Hill Mood Light Powder. Um, it's very similar to the Lancome Absolute Powders in that you could use it to set your face if you want. Um, you'll get a luminous finish all over or you can use it just in certain areas to add obviously illumination and glow. So this is the color Do Me, D-E-W, and I'm going to be using this with a Morphe E49 brush which is really great because this is a really great kind of powdery foundation brush but it's super slim and you can get this in and around smaller to reach areas so I'm going to press this first into the high points and then also around here into the temple so I want to curl my lashes and I'm going to be using of course Milk's Kush Mascara because you know Rasta yeah The before and after with this mascara, you guys, is just unreal. I love it so much. Um, but I do feel like for today's look, I'm probably going to need a lash just because I feel like it needs that fiery, sexy, long lash. So let's go ahead and put a lash on real quick. I love these lashes, you guys. These are Flirt Lashes by um, Stargirl Cosmetics, and I love, love, love them. Yes, these lashes are everything with this look. I want to add a little bit of warmth terracotta to my cheeks, so I'm going to take Unapologetic and Makeup Artist from this 8W Warm Master Blush Palette from Morphe and just mix those two together with a pop of Babe, which has this kind of like coral shimmer. And I'm going to blend those on my hand first. Smile big. Work that right across the apple and up into the cheekbone. Now to add just a little bit more highlight, I'm going to go into this flash palette from Jaclyn Hill Cosmetics and I want to grab a little bit of sparks and gleam. Blend those two together on this Jaclyn Hill brush. This is the J02 from that highlight collection and we're just going to press this ever so gently on the high point of the cheekbone. I'm going to take a little bit of that and just kind of gently drag it down the center of the nose here, the bridge of the nose. So I'm going to do like kind of a pinky neutral lip tone and then just gloss it up. This is London from NYX Cosmetics and I think this is going to be like the perfect color just to give me a really bare there um, look. And I'm going to hop on top of that neutral lip liner, this gloss topper. It's holographic gloss topper from LA Girl Cosmetics and this is the color Starlight. So let's do that. Ooh, 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 okay. Mmm, yes, honey. You know. I love a glossy moment, and I am living for this, you guys. Yes, love it. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Um, really quickly, I thought about something. I bought these palettes from Morphe. 
18 pan palettes. This is the 18S and there is this stunning gold glitter moment in here. And I'm thinking I'm going to take some on my finger and I, I just feel like I need it. Oh, 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 let's see. Yep. That's what I needed. That's what she needed. She needed a little more, right? Like I just, I feel like with this kind of a look, you just need a little extra va va voom, right? Yes. Okay. I'm living for that. Okay, guys. So this is the finished look. <laughs> um, super vampy, super sexy. Yeah, I'm living for it. I love me a good draggy licious moment. Um, and I love this color combination. And it's crazy because it's like basically Christmas colors, but it's just the vibe and the way that you like make it work that it becomes like a Rasta moment. And I needed it because I've been listening to, you know, my Bob Marley and the Whalers. Uh, 311 sublime slightly stupid just so much just trying to relax and get back into just my zone and just breathe and meditate and center myself um and i just i i want to be on an island somewhere i want to be on a vacation so yeah needed it i feel like we all need it um i hope everyone is doing well and safe and um don't be afraid to reach out if you're not it's okay not to be okay if I've learned anything over years of dealing with anxiety and depression is that it's okay not to be okay, but it's important to seek help. It's important to talk to people, providers, medical, friends, meditation, anything you can do. Um, utilize this time that we have at home to connect to people um, via social media, Zoom, um, any of your, you know, any people that you look up to, speakers, um, athletes musicians storytellers just take that time see what they're doing a lot of them are doing really great stuff online so you can feel connected and and feel something you know not i just hate the thought of people sitting at home and being numb you know and it's hard i know it is but i hope you guys enjoyed this little chit chatty get ready with me i hope you enjoyed this look Ew, i feel snatched i got nowhere to go but it's okay i'll take some cute pictures um, yeah, give me a thumbs up, like, subscribe to my channel, comment down below, check out my social media, and I'll see you guys again really soon.